Hi guys, it's Lynn here again. I've just uh, picked some vegetables in the garden and I picked this daisy because I want to get some more white flowers growing around because of the uh, attracting the bees and I can get about five cuttings off that so I'm going to put them in today. I picked a nice cabbage, got some nice lettuce there and some silver beet. Now you will notice some uh, slug bites on the silver beet. I don't care about that. I grow all my silver beet around the edge of the garden and I don't put slug bait down. So I only have a few slugs because it's so dry. Once I start watering with a summer garden and mulching, I'll, I might get a few more, but I'm not really worried about a few holes in my silver beet. It cooks up fine once I wash it. And yesterday, Wayne got a bee bite. So I'll just tell you what I did for the bee bite. He got it right on his cheek near his nose and uh, he came in and the sting was still in there. So I just scraped the sting off and I immediately uh, didn't spray on, but I put some eucalyptus on my uh, fingers and rubbed it into the spot straight away. And I gave him, now I'm not into pharmaceuticals guy, guys, except for emergencies. And I, but I do have uh, these, which are called citrazine, I think. And they're actually really good for, for uh, bites. So it makes them not swell. It says hay fever and allergy relief, but they're excellent for all the stings and bites you can get on a farm. So Coles have just brought these ones out. They're really cheap. I used to have Telfast, but these are very, very similar. So Wayne took that and had the eucalyptus on and it didn't swell up. I could see a little thumbnail uh, spot being raised up, but that's all. I'm sure he would have had a swollen eye and swollen nose if I hadn't got onto that. So he was pleased. Now the other day I was talking to you about the orange juice. One thing I didn't say is, one large orange has enough vitamin C for the recommended daily dose of vitamin C. So think about that guys, don't plant an orange tree if you haven't already got one. And don't worry about taking vitamin C tablets, which is basically synthetic anyway. Get the real deal and have one large orange per day and there's your recommended daily dose of vitamin C. Now what I didn't explain was, there is so much nutrition, and I've chopped this off, so much nutrition in the white pith around the orange. So I try and eat a few oranges during the week as well. I try and peel the skin really thinly, as you can see, so not much white's left on there. And then I keep that on and just eat that with the orange because a lot of the vitamin C and other nutrients and a lot of fiber is in the white of the orange. Some people don't like it, I remember when I used to go to school when I was young, uh, they used to have orange and apple for morning tea sometimes and the ladies always kept the, the white on. But now we've got a little bit softer, a lot of people don't like it and, and I leave mine on. Now the other day I was telling you about the brown rot in the apricot tree and they're the three little culprits. And what I found was this branch was actually diseased and dying out of all the trees. And so when you have a diseased and dying blan uh, branch, you can get other diseases if it has fruit on that same branch. And that's what happened. It was its weakest point. The only brown rod I had was on that point. So try and keep your, your trees disease free. I chopped that off straight away. And uh, so all the rest of the trees are really healthy. Now those three are, uh, apricots were actually on that branch too so but they weren't affected so they would have been soon so that's why i thought well i'll take the branch off because i can see it's diseased don't just take the fruit off look at the branch if it's only a small branch and that could be your trouble i'm also going to be doing some fermenting of uh, garlic because a lot of you guys like garlic but this is what happens as you can see here it starts to shoot this time of year in the warm weather That'll go get planted in the garden because I actually grow garlic all year round. I don't just have a seasonal time for, for growing my garlic. I can grow it pretty well all and year round. there's my whey from my milk kefir. I'm just going to put that into the dog food for um, Pippi with her puppies and she'll get a whole heap of probiotics out of that without knowing it. Now, one more thing I just want to say is in my garden at the moment, you might see this plant here in your garden as well. It's called barley grass. Now, why I don't like barley grass, one, look at all the seeds. 
and two, it doesn't mulch up that great before it. It doesn't have a really good leafy content. So if you mow it, it doesn't get, create a lot of mulch. But the biggest problem I have is the galahs and parrots and uh, parakeets love it and the rosales as well. So they get attracted to this in my garden and then they decide to eat everything else in the garden. So today I'm going to be getting it rid of my barley grass. And here I have some dock. In, that grows in my garden. You might think that's a rotten weed. It is a rotten weed. You can see all the seeds on the dock. So each one of them will grow. I can assure you, they'll grow. That's the leaf, how you identify the dock. It's not really sprayed, spread out very well. And I've got it back to front. But that is the leaf of the dock there. But what I want to tell you about the dock, which I'll do a video in the future, is I make a detoxing tea out of dock, nettle and fat hen. Dock, nettle and fat hen are wonderful for cleansing the blood. And so Wayne and I have that in springtime and it saves me spending hundreds of dollars on detox uh, potions and all the rest. I try and make as much as I can here. So that's it for today, guys, and see you soon.